When I share with you, let me just uh, prelude this with this, that um, a lot of my messages that I feel God has given to, to me, first of all, they're to me. I tell people, if you're, you're a minister, you've got to realize you're always ministering to yourself, so don't, don't apologize for that. I mean, I did for a while. I just said, God, I'm, I'm just trying to preach myself into victory. Uh, I hope there's something good for everybody else. <laughs> but um, I'm not preaching at anybody. or for, It's always stuff that I'm dealing with. And, but in turn, one of the, one of the things that I believe is taking place is equipping. The Bible talks about gifts of pastor and teachers, all that, equipping the saints. And so one thing we're doing here when we gather is to build ourselves up, up in our most holy faith, to grow ourselves, get more intimate with Jesus ourselves, and encourage each other that way. And it's more than just a sermon and, and the music. It's just our interaction. But the other side is, is equipping you and me to help share this truth with other people. So a lot of what I'm preaching, I'm always thinking, man, I, I, I don't know if I've said it enough to just say, this is not just because you're not doing well in this area. It could be an area we're all doing really well in, but we really need to fine tune and get, you know, how, how do we communicate this to the people around us? That's that's the real work of the kingdom. Is uh, it's not about building. We've said it forever. It's not building a church or a ministry. It's building the kingdom. The kingdom of God's in the hearts of people. So, so uh, we're in a culture right now that uh, culture is almost always against the gospel. It is interesting, I was sharing, you know, I shared last week, shared a little bit with some people today, but uh, people who want to rule over other people don't like Christianity. The Serbians run a rule, Kosovo, and other, they want to take over everything. And they hate Christianity, and you think, man, is that just demonic? Well, yeah, it is, but part of it is, is because if you want to use socialism, communism, and all that to rule over people, Christianity is sets people free. It just, it just... You and I, we don't have to preach against governments. Paul, Jesus didn't, Paul didn't, but all governments hate us because you cannot manipulate people as easy when they're Christians. Christ came and sets us free. It just changes things. So <clears throat> you're always bucking culture, but you've got to work with culture. So you start, you, you, you blend with culture and you figure out how to take the culture that is around you and, and then learn how to bring the kingdom truth into it. And one of the things that right now is happening is, uh, is people are starting to be aware of the spirituality of their life. Most people are not uh, pro for Christian and pro for uh, church, pro for uh, religion in general. In some ways, that's not all bad because religion is not the kingdom. And it's a substitute. It was interesting to, to listen to some of these Islamic guys, they were just, you know, they're just Islamic because they've been ruled by Islam people for 500 years. But when they actually start searching for truth, they, they, so they'd go and they start doing these Muslim things. And like I said, can you imagine trying to repeat a prayer and mark it down a thousand times in one day? Uh, and it had built up to 5, 10, 15, 100, 500, and then and finally just saying, that is not transforming my life. By the way, when, they, when he did the water baptized and said, I, I'm a Christian, he said, I was transformed. He said, everything inside flipped. And all my anger and all my fear and all that left. And so <clears throat> as we try to uh, bring the kingdom out, uh, right now in the world, we don't need to defend church. We don't need to defend ministries. We don't need to try to build ministries. We, what we need to do is just get the kingdom in ourselves and then uh, and then get that out to individuals around us and one of the one of the things we can kind of use right now is there's a lot more awareness of some of the big speakers you know I've, there's, uh, there's a comedian that's sharing about his depressions and, and all that and then he came got into some uh, pretty strong drugs and he said I never believed in God but when I took this drug I I, I met God and you and I can say well I don't you know, <laughs> and we can but here's the deal. He came to a, he's progressing from believing there was no God, no creator. And he said, by having this encounter, he said, now I know there's a God. That's progress. 
Okay, may not be where we want him to, you know, or, but he's heading the right direction. And I think, so there's a, kind of a, as far as terminology, it's a little bit more of coming down to people saying they want to know about the spirit part of our life. Uh, and God is a spirit. I mean, we're, we can use that to go right in uh, to help them understand the kingdom. So when I share with some of you some of these things, it's, it's uh, my hope and my prayer is that, and I know what it is, God is preparing us, just like Elisa said, the more we take in, uh, it'll ooze out of us. <sighs> I'm going to throw this out real quick again, but uh, one of the ministries that's out there in the world today is G12, and it's all over the world. Uh, Enrico was just telling me they got a big conference in Manila. Um, one of the pastors invited me to come to Australia a few years ago and get involved in G12. And it's kind of this deal about discipleship, again, 12 disciples under you and them all fly. But um, so Sabri, Sabri that I just was mentioning to you that on his testimony, he had a church and it was going great, got into G12. It ended up that they actually took over his church, booted him. Uh, it's a real... Um, it looks like a really great program of discipling people, getting people saved. It does all that, but then ultimately they are controlling people. It's a real, I think, of hierarchy. I'm above you. You're going to do what I tell you to do. And so as a pastor, they booted him, and he lost a lot. Um, had to leave the country. And so <clears throat> what I'm saying is that's the trouble when you try to, you're trying to be a hero and build a ministry, build a big uh, church or something like that. We got, you know, Jesus didn't call us to do that. He called, he, if you read New Testament, they're always talking about G, Paul, Jesus preached the kingdom. But sometimes it's a little confusing of what really is the kingdom. So I'm going to share a little bit down that line today. <clears throat> Let me, I'm going to start off with Ezekiel 16. You've heard me say this before, but there's so much perversion out there that just as you, we all are inundated with the, how bad and some people get but here's what it says you know in Ezekiel about Sodom and Gomorrah who got extremely messed up sexually it says behold this was the guilt of your sister Sodom she and her daughters had arrogance that's that's pride that's arrogance it's not necessarily bad it just you know they felt good about themselves they were doing good and so they had abundance of food that's not bad that's a good thing God promises us abundance of food I said, and careless ease. Well, that just means they were they were living pretty free uh, from cares. They you know they had stuff and and things were going really well. That's not necessarily bad. So, but they said, but she did not help the poor and the needy, or did not grab the hand to empower other people to rise up. Thus. They were haughty and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I removed them. And actually, you could, it says, when, when I saw it, but actually, probably more likely says, then I removed them and you saw it. And part of it was to save mankind. God has to sometimes, he had to do desperate things to save mankind of the cancers and the evil that was coming in. But isn't it interesting that Sodom and Gomorrah, known for sexual things, but in all reality, the word is saying here, the real problem was they had an abundance, they had food, they had, they had good things, stuff, stuff we would say about America. But they did not take the hand of those and try to lift them up. You know, I've been in Haiti where I met the most richest people I met at that time, uh, living right beside poor people, and they did nothing for them. I mean, it was like we were coming in trying to help everybody, and they're, they're right beside them, and... I mean, they'd have their mansion right there, and then have squatters right there. You know, where every time it rained, it just washed through their little tents and all that. And they did nothing. And I begin to realize, man, you can. Uh, God wants us to prosper. God wants us to have abundance. God wants us to be blessed. But we got to remember that we're still representing Him to help lift other people up. And America has done that a lot, by the way. Praise the Lord. So we talked about Matthew 6.33 the other day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto His righteousness, you know. And so how do we seek the kingdom and His righteousness? Well, remember, righteousness is just the way it should be, okay? There's a way that it should be, and then there's a way that it shouldn't be. And so we're seeking 
God's viewpoint of what of the way things should be. It's a simple but powerful thing. He said, seek ye first the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. And the word seek means to seek, you know, with the intent to find. It means to seek first and only. And I think sometimes we just need to... Uh, We just need to really uh, bear down on that. And you say, well, wh how do I do that? Well, part of it is just, uh, just your own conversation with yourself is saying, you know, I'm seeking the kingdom. Wake up in the morning and say, I'm seeking. I'm seeking. I I'm looking for it. I expect to find it, by the way. He said, if you seek me with all your heart, you're going to find me. And no matter where we're at, we got young people, older people, uh, you know, retired people, whatever. Boy, there, there's nobody except, there's no ex exclusion on this. Every one of us needs to be seeking the kingdom of God. First and foremost, always, to our last breath. But what is the kingdom of God and what is his righteousness? A couple of other scriptures here I want to read to you. Proverbs 12, 28 says, In the way of righteousness is life. There's a path, a way of, of the way it should be. And if you're on that path, it's life. And in its pathway, there is no death. You know, one of the things the Bible says, watch over your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. And so, again, one of the things, the kingdom of God is in our hearts. So we watch that, we guard that, we are aware of that. And I meet a lot of Christians, and so do you, that they're not aware of that. They're doing their religious thing, going to church and all that, but they're not aware that the, the, everything is coming out of their heart. They're, they're out there trying to change circumstances all the time. They're wound up about the circumstances. They're wound up about what other people are doing and all that. And it's like that, that has almost nothing to do with what we're doing. When we live out of this, it affects everything around us. If we're going to be an impact to our society and the people around us, we get, become kingdom-minded inside. And as we grow and walk in the kingdom, it starts changing things out here. Such a better plan than trying to go out there and pick it and yell and, and get all upset. Uh, you know, I'm telling you, we're powerful, but we got weapons that we need to learn what they are. And one of those weapons is, is walking in righteousness, and there is no death. And... Uh, and Guard your heart with all your, uh, watch over your heart with, uh, you know, above everything else. Why? Because out of it flows the forces of life, the issues of life. And one of those things is escapes from death, is in, this, in the definition of that word. You know, we're not, uh, just talked to a friend. He just lost a good friend that just, uh, you know, head on collision with two trucks. You know, uh, they're gone. We had a good chance of losing Mark and Elaine just recently. You know, things do happen, but we can, I believe, I believe that if, as we seek him, he will bring escapes from death to us. I, you know, there's, there is life in that path. I don't know how to say that. I'm not trying to condemn anybody that's going through it because, man, we all get shot at. We cannot... Be, you know, uh, one of my friends got, uh, you know, m malaria, and he just, when they went to minister to him, he said, it's not your fault, don't be, and he said, my, what was killing him was he felt guilty for getting malaria. And he almost died and went to heaven because of that guilt and shame. Thinking as a minister and a word of faith guy, he should have never got sick. You don't want to go there, okay? We all get attacked. You want to go look for the way out of it when you get into it. Uh, Psalms 23, 3 says this, He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This one I, I like to bring up to God all the time because I renews my mind. I said, Lord, you know, show me the right way. You know, bless me. Do all these things. Heal me. Uh, prosper me and all that for your name's sake. If it was my sake, just take me home. <laughs> Plain and simple, folks. As much as I love living here, as much as I want, I'm going to remain here, be with you, and, and, uh, and, and love it. Boy, if, it was, if we just wanted the best thing for us, we'd go home. Man, once we get there, it's going to be so phenomenal. But for his namesake, and I tell you that, I think that helps to, to really solidify your motive that you're not, you know, compared to Sodom and Gomorrah, it wasn't that the, we can be blessed, we can prosper, we can have a lot of food, but we're here for his namesake, not for ours. If you can keep that, you won't be, that's a, that's a huge victory that, that keeps things right the way they should be. So as we seek this kingdom, and again, people say, well, 
because they hear a lot of, I talk to, you know, Michael and Leslie a lot, about, you know, from all our background, but we're always talking about, man, how do we preach the kingdom and not religiosity and not Christianity and not church? But part of it is, what is the kingdom? Well, really, the word kingdom just simply means the place where the king is, a place where a king is ruling, a place where there, you know, you and I, we, we don't have a background of, of, of kings, but... I kind of like the idea of a king because a really good king takes care of his people. Oh, we, you know, a good king, he draws in taxes and all that, but to, to keep the nation going, to guard the nation, protect them from other enemies. Boy, there's no better government than a really, to me, the best government in the world is a dictator that's good. A king that's good. Jesus is going to be our ruler, ultimately, for everybody, and he's good. It's a good thing. The trouble with dictatorship down here is they're never good. <laughs> they're just never good. I mean, maybe for a little while, but you know, not very well. There've been a few, been a few kings and stuff, and rulers that have been really good to people. But so it's a little hard for us to kind of understand this. So the point, the point today is just thinking about why would we want to seek his kingdom? Why would we want to seek his rulership? Why would we want to seek his will? Why would we want to lay down all our opinions, all our drives, all our ambitions, all our dreams, all our bucket lists, and come to him and lay it all down and say, I, I, I give this, I'm no longer living, I, I give up, I'm coming into an exchange with you in this covenant, I lay everything I've ever had, ever will have, or ever could have at your feet feet and there's a great exchange when we get born again and that which is his becomes ours and that which is ours becomes his why would we want to do that and i'm telling you most people have not uh, stopped and thought about it long enough and stays thinking about it long enough and most people have just this inward nature that says i don't want him to totally control my life and you've heard me say it before but i've been with men where i just say can you can you speak out of your mouth, Lord Jesus, thy will be done, not mine. I'll do whatever you ask to. And I have, have, in my lifetime, very few men, women, that can just verbally say, that's what I want. I mean, I've literally tried to lead them in prayer, and it's like they won't say it. Some will finally do it out of, you know, out of embarrassment, but it's like, no. But it's like with enthusiasm saying, Father, thy will be done. Thy, that's what I want. What do you want to do in life? I asked the teenager. You know, when I was in Bible college, high school, one of the biggest challenges I thought when we were graduating from high school, everybody's asked, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And it's like, uh. And I thought, what a horrible question to ask kids. But I ask them now. What are you going to do? And, I, you know, every graduation class that we had out of the school, I'd, I'd spend time with the seniors saying, is anybody asking you what are you going to do? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, well, I'm thinking about this. I said, you don't need to know. And it's like, What? I said, you really don't need to know that. You don't need to decide that. You need to go out there and enjoy, start enjoying your life and living and exploring. You don't, but, you know, most of them go right from there to college, and then college says, what are you going to do? you gotta, you got to pick your program. How many pick a program, get halfway through, and then say, well, I don't want to do this, and do somehow. Graduate with a big, huge bill and don't want to do it. It's stupid. But part of it is, so when they were asking me, the way I found peace in the kingdom was I said, I'm going to do whatever Jesus tells me to do. So I'm in a Bible college, you know, going through there and uh, finish one year. I want to go all kind of, no little details there. But, uh, <laughs> but then that next summer I'm there and I'm helping people move in. And we're moving in the coach for the next soccer. I, I got to play soccer the first year and, and, man, that was fun. I want to do it again. And we're moving the coach in, you know, and the, and the coach is saying, John, are you going to be here? Are you going to play soccer? I said, no, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm going to think I'm going to be in college. He goes, oh, why not? I said, because, I, 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 you know, my thinking was, I usually said, I didn't say it that particular day, but in my heart I was saying, stay on, plan, stay on target, John, stay on target. You're going to do what the Father tells you to do, nothing else. Not trying to figure it out. Just, you know, and I hadn't had a word from the Lord about going back to college. And so he, the more we, put, we moved him in, the more he started bugging me and the more he started asking. And I was just about ready to say, well, maybe I could take a few classes so I could play soccer. And one of my rebellious friends that was there that had been watching me, following me, you know, uh, he's a pastor's son, uh, you know, always in trouble. But uh, you never know who you're impacting. And finally, by the time I'm to yield, 
and say, well, may I will take, you know, maybe I will just play soccer. His name was Larry. He just turned to the coach and said, you need to understand something. The coach says, what's that? He says, John is only going to do the will of the Lord, nothing else. So you're wasting your time talking to him. And I go, Whew, close, real close. <laughs> Save my... Point being, when you, what does it mean to seek first the kingdom? You're seeking his lordship. You're seeking his, his being the king of your life. Him directing all of your paths. The paths of righteousness come by him directing and showing you. And so the path of righteousness that we're seeking for, I know it's almost negative to most people. Like, ah, I don't, that sounds boring. That sounds like I won't get to have any fun. That sounds like I won't get to do what I really want to do. If I, Man, if I totally tell God I'll do whatever he wants me to do, he's going to send me some weird place. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to, you know, I don't know if I want to really do that. Why would we want to seek the kingdom? Why would we want to seek his rulership? Why would we want to seek his righteousness the way it should be according to his plan? Because it is the only and the greatest place for you that could ever be. There is no greater place of joy. There is no greater place of fulfillment. There is no greater joy that you could have and, and fun and et cetera. But most of us don't see it that way. We're always thinking about what Jody just ministered on. He'll get me to an uncomfortable place, and I'll have to plow through. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. I mean, seriously, that you and I know, that's a lot of our self-talk. I'm afraid to commit. I don't want to get over my head. I don't want, I, I look at some other people, and they're sold out, and they, boy, oh, I don't want that. Boy, they look miserable. <laughs> they got some, I mean, they're not having any fun, and they're not prospering, and they're not, and the problem is, you do, <laughs> we're not seeing the Father right, we're not seeing His righteousness right, we're not seeing it, we're still taking our old value system, and our old thoughts, and our old framework, and, uh, and our grid as we see things, and we don't, and we don't really believe that His way is the best way for me. He knows me better than I know myself. He knows, he knows what he's placed inside of me. He knows what will satisfy me. So then we come to, to Romans, the 14th chapter, 17. It said, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. And that means it's not the temporal world down here. We got to live in it, but we don't have to focus on it. We got eyes that can see past it. We can see into the spiritual realm. And when we're sharing with other people, and maybe they're not, they're not really, you know, you wouldn't call them uh, seeking God. You wouldn't call them, you know, they don't have any Christian background. But I'm telling you, <clears throat> you can start reaching out to them. Change your terminology a little bit. Don't worry about quoting every scripture to them. But a lot of them are saying, I realize that there's a spiritual realm, there's a, and, you know, and I want to I tap into that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not really joking, but taking it just, man, even if they're getting there through taking, uh, hell, uh, you know, wild drugs, it's a start. And go with it. And say, I, and just say, I, I understand that spiritual realm. I know God. I, I experience him. Boy, a lot of people, if you can say that without tripping their religious you know, terminologies, they're going to be intrigued. And the truth is, you do know him. He is a spirit, and, and you have encountered him. And that's what most people have not, even people, people in the church forever, haven't encountered an intimate uh, you know, experience with the spirit of God. They, don't, they know the head thing, but their heart, this thing takes place in here where you feel it. I've said it before, if you don't feel loved, you're not loved. It's not that God doesn't love you, but you got like an umbrella up so that it doesn't pass. That's what these people are doing that we're ministering to. We're trying to get them to pull that umbrella down of fear and previous thoughts and thinking like that and all that and trying to reach into there and say, you know, and even when I'm talking to people, I always go back to reaching into their heart if I can and, and I try to really avoid their head. So I don't get into arguments with natural things. I just start looking and saying, God, show me something that I can deal with, that I can pull out of their heart, that where the areas of the heart issues of joy, peace, patience, goodness, all those kind of things. And uh, most of the time, I mean, almost all the time, folks, it's happening to you, it's happening to me, this is why we need to talk about this, but this, that's what we're doing, and that's how it works. 
Our previous training sometimes wants us to get them into the church, get them into Bible school, get them into the Bible and all that. And that will all come. But first of all, we've got to reach out into their heart where they feel things. And you say, well, I don't know how to do that. The Holy Spirit does. Ask him. Seek him. Keep looking at him. He'll help you. He'll show you. If you don't seek, you won't find. But have some confidence. We all, you and I, we, we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, seeking Him, so that when we get there, we're aware of, and just say, Holy Spirit, help me to reach into this person's heart and touch something, Spirit of God, that you know. And He does. And sometimes you'll say spiritual words that you have no idea. They just came out of your mouth. They didn't seem much to you. And they are words that those people will take and start growing. And just that illustration Elisa shared is so powerful. And dirt that shouldn't raise things. You, you cover, you put a house over a bunch of dirt for a long time, it shouldn't grow anything. And it'll start growing. The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. It's not about this natural world. We still kind of compare and think, well, if I really, if I've got a better truck than them, maybe they want to listen to me about Jesus. It really doesn't work that way. <laughs> You know, if I, you know, if you ever want to impress somebody, don't try to beat them at their game. You know, I ministered a pastor's uh, couple and the missionaries, and, and she was a great basketball player, and he was, I, I forget what sport he was into, but he was just, uh, he was bragging to me, yeah, finally I beat her on one-on-one -on -one the other day. <laughs> I looked at him, and I looked at her, and I said, that was a great day, wasn't it? And she goes, I thought, huh, husband? You trying to beat her at her game? You're stupid. You're not helping your marriage at all. And it's the same thing when you meet somebody that's really smart in particular. Don't try to compete with them. Honor what they got. That's one of the secrets of witnessing the people is don't try to outdo them in the area that they do things. But relate to them and encourage them and listen to their story. That'll get you into that, that area where you can start placing the words of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not about all that kind of stuff. Don't compare yourself. Don't try to beat anybody in that game. But what is the kingdom of God? It's, it's, it's righteousness. It's where the king is showing you the right path the way it should be, that you can walk on, and in that path you will find life and there'll be no death there. Powerful for healing. What is it? It's righteousness. It's joy. Man, this is one that really gets me. God, help me. Help me find the joy. Help me find the joy. Here. It's not out here. It'll never be because you... You know, and it's peace. It's peace. It's not the peace that comes from having all your circumstances right. We try to get peace by having everything go right and smooth. That's, that's not the kingdom, and that's not the, the righteous path. That's not the way it should be, and you're going to be frustrated. You're always going to be looking for a vacation. You're always going to be looking for that, and, 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 and you're going to try. You know, and here's the other thing. Then you start seeking the easiest way. Do you know water fall, throw, goes the easiest way? Electricity goes the easiest way? And so we think, well, there's a good principle. I'll find the easiest way in life. You know, the problem with that is when you seek the kingdom of God, if, you, you know, if you're looking for the easiest way, that is the easiest way for Satan to lead you down a wrong path. All he's got to do is set up a situation where it looks like you're going to get rich with easy and you're going you're gonna to have this with, without having to work and you're going to have this without having to you know, get in uncomfortable situations. It is the easiest way to get off the path. It's when your goal in life is to find the easiest way. But I talk to people all the time. They're just saying, I'm just looking for, no, I, that's hard. I ain't going to do it. That's hard. I'm not going to do it. And, and the the end of time, you know, the problem with going down the easiest way, it always ends up disastrous. It always ends up being a hard way. That's why we want to seek his way and not our way. That's why we want to lay down our opinion and our desires because they will get us into a bad place. When you say, Jesus, not my will, but thy will be done, whatever it is, you're the smartest person on the earth right there because he knows the right way that has what? Peace, joy. The, everything right, everything starts being added unto you. So if we can take this concept, spend time with it, 
Keep on seeking ourselves. Keep on growing. Keep on yielding to him and just say, man, you're my king. I belong to you. Man, that's all for us. It is for his sake, but it's also for our sake from the standpoint, you're the, you're the safest. You're the safest you could be when you're walking in the righteous path. But you know how many people say, well, it's too risky for me to go do that. It's too risky to get involved with Sela. It's too risky to get involved in that. It's too risky to go overseas. You know, people say, I've had so many friends say, are you safe when you go to Albania? I said, I'm safe all the time. You gotta, we got to change our thinking. I know. <laughs> I'll bring it up one more time, maybe never again. I know that the statistics say that you're better off having a seatbelt on when you're in a wreck than not. But here's the problem. If you ever start trusting in seatbelts, laws, anything in the natural realm, above trusting in God, you are headed down a bad path. You are in high-risk territory. We do not live by statistics, folks. We live in the kingdom. And the kingdom is not in this natural realm. We live by what? Listening to what our king is telling us to do. So if he says, put on your seatbelt, put it on. But don't just put it on without thinking about it and saying, my trust is not in this seatbelt. My trust is not in, in all, all these other things. My trust is not in this world system of finances. My trust is not in my job. My trust is not in my company. My trust is in you and you only. And you will take care of me. I belong to you. You know, when you do that, you live in peace no matter what is hitting you, no matter what disease hits you, no matter what, what financial things hit you. That's the kingdom. That's the good news that we got. Seek God and how you can get that across to people that have no knowledge. And don't worry about getting them totally educated. Just get them started. And then he'll, pick, he'll, he'll keep them going. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you care so much for us. And today, I thank you for transformation in each of our hearts. Oh, you've transformed us, but we, we, we need to be daily renewing our minds. And Father, I thank you that our daily walk with you, our getting up, doing the dishes, feeding our kids, going to our jobs, we present all of it to you as holy, set apart. We're doing it for your name's sake. We, we belong to you. We willingly, cheerfully, joyfully, intently, and 100% say, Thy will be done in my life. I'm not seeking a career. I'm not seeking fame and fortune. I'm not seeking to be legendary in any way. I'm just seeking you. And whatever you tell me to do, by your grace, I'll do it. Not by my hard effort, not by my sacrifice. You're not looking for my sacrifice. You're not looking for anybody's sacrifice. You're looking for people who trust you. And then whenever you speak to us, when you speak to us anything, it may seem uncomfortable to our flesh, but you always grant unto us all the grace that we need to do it. It's by your power, by the power that works mightily within us, not us. Oh, Father, take us to a higher level, we pray. We're seeking you this morning. Take us to a higher level of walking in the kingdom, walking in your righteousness, walking in peace, walking in joy. And for your name's sake, it will build the kingdom throughout the whole earth. We're winning. We're taking over with you. Your kingdom, your rulership will never cease and it'll never cease increasing. Help us see that today when we're hearing so much noise from the other side. Thanks. Thank you that we're not 
living so limited in this earthly realm. We're living in that spiritual realm that's so unlimited. And Father, I feel in my heart right now great gains. Great gains in each one of us right here today. And those listening to me, in Jesus' name, I feel it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll have a great week.